So over the past two years, my life has revolved around many things, such as business meetings, presenting at symposiums, and going to labs to conduct research, because that's what normal high schoolers do, right? Now, uh, this, my life sort of morphed into this reality when I started to think of an idea three years ago. And this idea revolved around two concepts, wastewater and bacteria. And get this, their ability to produce electricity. So today I'm not just going to be emphasizing the idea behind bioelectricity. I'm going to be particularly applying it to, on a global scale, specifically towards wastewater treatment plants. Now, here's a scary reality that I think we must consider. Wastewater treatment plants, they're a vital industry. And I know that we don't think about it often, but we rely on these facilities to discharge clean water back into our nation's streams and rivers. So it's really, really scary to know that these processes require massive amounts of energy. And the reason why we should care is because this same water is running through the pipes to your households, down the tap, and into your stomachs. So it becomes a worry, worrisome concept when even economists believe that the cost of sustaining treatment plants is, quote, unpredictable. So what I try to do to resolve this whole solution is to build a single-celled microbial fuel cell, or MFC. Now, uh, these are electrochemical devices that basically convert chemical energy into electrical energy through the use of the bacteria that's present inside wastewater. So right here we have a basic structure of a MFC, and it works very much like a battery. So we have the anode and the cathode, and they're connected with copper wire to create an open circuit. And then this battery is submerged inside wastewater, and that's basically the fuel source. So how these things work is that the bacteria inside the wastewater, they break down the nutrients, and then from this point, uh, they uh, produce electrons. And these electrons then float from the anode all the way to the cathode. And that's basically how they produce electricity. So in my research, I'm basically trying to control the whole system of which these electrons are moving throughout the circuit. So in order to do this, I applied two electron acceptors, which were potassium ferrocyanide and manganese dioxide. And what I was able to do is put them inside of these electron acceptors and make sure that they can attach to the inner mitochondrial membranes, or the cell bodies, basically. So in order to do this, I saturated the electrodes. And from there, I was able to conduct this whole experiment trying to figure out the electron process within these fuel cells. So basically, what we're trying to see here is that conducting research is not easy. I mean, the, what makes my project so difficult is the fact that it spans into so many different areas. And, you know, I'm not a biochemist. I'm not a chemical engineer. I'm not an industrial pretreatment specialist. I'm a high school student. So it makes me even more excited to know that my fuel cells actually worked. So let's talk about this. Now, my fuel cells, they were able to produce about 2,500 milliwatts of power production in just one of those fuel cells. And on top of that, they were also able to reduce that amount or the amount of inorganic pollutants by 84%. So that's highly effective wastewater treatment right there. So I see a lot of you guys are going, so what? You know, why is this important? And the reason is, I developed a device that creates energy out of our poo water. And why is that important? It goes back to the main concept of application. Now, earlier I talked about how important these wastewater treatment plants are. And we need to find renewable energy sources to sustain these plants. So let's talk about the implementation of these fuel cells. With my research, I was able to see that the most important parts are the electrodes. So if I were to implement that inside an actual anaerobic digester, which is one of the tanks inside these um, fuels or inside these wastewater treatment plants, I'd be able to put an electrode at the top and the bottom of the tank. So it's a really simple, simple design, and it very much complements these uh, machines. So let's talk about the logistics of that. Now, if I were to, now these clarifying tanks, they're about 50 feet wide and 15 feet deep. So if I were to implement my fuel cells inside an actual anaerobic digester, I'd be producing 1,471 kilowatts of energy. Just one tank in that wastewater treatment plant, it only requires about 439 kilowatts. 
So I'd be producing three times the surplus of energy even needed inside these tanks. Now, to make sense of those numbers, um, we like money, so let's talk in terms of money. One kilowatt per hour costs about 15 cents. Now, on top of that, to fuel and operate an anaerobic digester for a month, it would cost five to $10,000. With the implementation of my fuel cell, I'm able to create $220,650 in just that same duration. So I would be able to basically take care of the construction costs in about five to six years, very short amount of time. And to go paint an even bigger picture, because this is getting really, really exciting, is that with the leftover energy that I'm able to produce, I can be able to power 820 homes each year. And that's after I have implemented my fuel cells inside an actual um, treatment plant process. So I think that's the part that gets me each and every single time is because I took something as bland as wastewater and was able to turn that and give it potential. Now, wastewater treatment plants, when we think of wastewater treatment plants, what do we think of? We think dirty, we think nasty, we think waste, we think bacteria. But now we can think of these places as clean, renewable energy sources. We can think of them as the face, as the future for bioelectricity. I'm, I'm going to leave you on a quote from um, an American computer scientist, Alan Kay. And he said that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And by tapping into an already abundant, already existent source, we can not only be able to predict the future, but we can also make sure we secure the opportunities to make our future even better. So the next time you turn on the tap water, the next time you flush the toilet, Think about the potential energy that you could be harnessing from your own wastewater. Because the great part is that wastewater is not just wastewater anymore. It's energy. Thank you.